Welcome to the Exotic Pet Collective. My name is Richard, and today we've got uh, a, a different type of guest than what I'm normally having on the podcast. Um, this gentleman, I want to let him introduce himself and talk to him, but a reptile entrepreneur on uh, Instagram. That, is that correct? I get their, your name correct? What, what? Uh, that's correct. Okay, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> um, so just kind of start off, can you, can you just tell everybody your name and what it is that you do? Just kind of give us some background information. Okay. My name is Bill Strand, and many people know me from uh, the Chameleon Academy. That's uh, a, a big account I do in the chameleon world. I have a podcast, I uh, work with the YouTube videos, and uh, I've recently started a uh, the Reptile Entrepreneur podcast and working to get it on YouTube a bit. Uh, and it's it's focused on helping people create a business within the reptile world because there's... Uh, our reptile community is growing. And, and when I say reptile, I, I mean anything you'd see at a reptile show. So that includes tarantulas and the scorpions and the inverts and and mud skippers and <laughs> all the strange stuff that doesn't fit into nice, neat categories of mammal, bird, or fish. Uh, and But our community is growing so much. And a lot of that is because of COVID. It just exploded during the lockdowns. Uh, and... There's this need for quality reptiles, quality equipment, and things that come from people within the community. Uh, there's such a need for it that that need is going to be filled somehow by someone, and it could be someone slapping their label on a, a Chinese import product, or it could be coming from within the community. And with 3D printing and with people getting into breeding, there's so much potential from within the community for our community members to fill that space. But there is uh, something in the way that people who breed aren't necessarily good at marketing. And uh, someone who has a, something they made on a 3D printer doesn't necessarily know how to set up a website or e-commerce or, or get that outreach. And so I wanted to start the Reptile Entrepreneur it's it's a, a show, I would say, multimedia show, and that offers help in all of these different aspects so you can put together a business and get get your products out there. And that's it's I started it last year and it has been going great. I've been having a blast with it. Yeah. That's actually where I first dis I came across you, discovered you. I, I don't even remember who shared it with me, but uh somebody sent me a link. I think, or, or, you know, I don't know exactly how. It was on Instagram. Probably it was Dan one of your babies. stories. That's what I was going to say. I think it was after Amphibicast. Uh, I did a podcast yeah, with yeah. him, and, and he was like, you should check this guy out. And, I, and I've been following you since. Um, I don't know anything really about chameleons. or, or Like, I, <laughs> I know you solely from the reptile entrepreneur, and I've been really fascinated, especially lately, with a lot of the Instagram stories you've been posting. And these, mm -hmm. you know, like, these short little videos but packed, jam packed with a lot of useful information. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's uh, you know, we just did a podcast uh, on on your your platform. I guess I don't know how exactly to say that yeah. correctly. Yeah, I guess we call it a multimedia platform now. Yeah. <laughs> so we just got done recording uh, a podcast, and and now we're doing it. Uh, on, would you say turning the mic around kind of situation? Turn the mic around. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, we we were we discussed this a little bit there. Um, so anybody listening. I highly suggest you go over and, and check out uh, his podcast. Uh, there's a lot of, a lot of cool information on there. Um, but you, one of the things that I, I found interesting uh, with the reptile entrepreneur thing that you're doing is that, that that's like, there's a void for that. You know, it's like uh, when we were talking, I talked, I, I was, and I've, I've shared this a lot that a lot of the stuff that I've learned about making YouTube videos or, or editing or photography or anything like that. I learned from watching people, whose like main job on YouTube is teaching people how to make YouTube videos or teaching people about entrepreneur, uh, you know, how to do marketing and, and stuff like that. Um, but that's always like, it's, it's either just really wide, like yeah, whether you're doing gaming or cooking or whatever, uh, it, it's very broad uh, or it's like really focused on uh, photography, you know, like, like how to get brand deals with cameras and stuff like that, which doesn't really help me at all, but I'm able to pick out the pieces that apply to what I'm doing so I think it's really cool that, that your main focus is for people in the exotic pet community uh, on how to grow their yeah. brand. Yeah, and, and that's true. You can find the pieces all over. You can find uh, training and Instagram 
YouTube, uh, e-commerce, websites, all of these things, you can find uh, specific training for that. But what's missing is the, the overall bringing it together into a, a coherent package because you may not know what pieces you need and how they all fit together. And you could be spending all of your time learning TikTok. And if it doesn't fit in with your overall strategy, it's a lot of wasted time. And, and that's the real problem with <laughs> this. We, we have all of this information available to us. There's so much information out there. You can find in information on anything. So the problem now isn't finding the information. It's figuring out, number one, what information do I really need? What's going to be useful to me? And what's the good information? Because there's no barrier to putting out garbage information. Uh, and you, if you're going to go out and go to YouTube and learn something, you are going to go through a lot of garbage and you have to be skilled at picking out the good stuff. So my value that I bring in this show is I am, I have been in the reptile community for who knows how long I've grown up in the reptile community as well as product marketing. That's my, uh, my career outside of uh, the reptile community. And I've gone through all of this, uh, the social media and uh, podcasting and YouTubing. And so I have that perspective of how this all goes together. And I have a passion for teaching and uh, uh, packaging it in a way that it makes sense uh, for people to put together a strategy. And my, my 2022 theme is that I'm going to be uh, spending this entire year going through putting together an e-commerce business. And so when you, you have a product uh, or you, you even want to have an online presence, you need to have a strategy as to uh, all the pieces that are going to go into that. And so uh, I've decided we're going to put together an e-commerce business for the first quarter, Q1, for all you business people, is uh, we're going to establish our digital uh, footprint, our home base. And I've um, I selected Instagram as that home base. And, and you go onto my Instagram account and my podcast, uh, you'll see uh, all the reasonings as to why Instagram, I've chosen that as the best social media for your home base. Now, of course, if you've got a favorite social media, go ahead, go for it. But if you're wondering which one you should pick, well, go ahead, pick this one. And so for all of Q1, I'm going to be, uh, I'll have interviews, but I'm going to do a lot of tutorials on the best practices for Instagram. For Q2, we're going to start setting up an e-commerce part of that. And, and I'm going to be using the print-on-demand t-shirt uh, just as a, uh, to sh uh, show p give people a product. So if you follow, you're going to follow my program, you get your Instagram account set up and all the best practices, then you're going, we're going to add a, a t-shirt e-commerce. I'm going to go over building a logo and all of that. So you'll have a logo. We'll put it on t-shirts and now you're going to have a product that you can sell. You're not going to get rich, but what I'm giving you is the structure that you can now build on and add your product or whatever it is you're going to be doing. Uh, into the third quarter, we're going to be going over podcast and YouTube. We're going to give you an outreach of that. And then in the fourth quarter, we're actually going to build a e-commerce website, which is a, I mean, everybody talks about it, but it's a huge project to actually put it together and run it. And so, uh, throughout the entire 2022, you Start with me with Instagram. You're going to end with an e-commerce website and you're going to have all the pieces uh, to have a marketing outreach for your customers. And uh, I, I'm really excited for being able to have that available for anybody in the reptile community to uh, re reference and say, what part do I need to make it work for me? Wow. That's, that's a pretty ambitious goal you've got there. <laughs> so uh, yeah, if somebody starts with you <laughs> right now, uh, and, and follows you through to the end of the year. They'll, they'll go from creating an Instagram profile to having an uh, online website gen income generating business. 
Yes, yes. Income generating business. You will actually have, we're going to, if you don't know what you want to do, stick with me and you will have a merch business that you can do. And if you can make, people make, make a living selling t-shirts. If you are creative enough and that's something that you love to do, then yeah, this can be, (laughs) this could be your side business. Um, I really mean it to be a structure that people can then build on and add their their personal things that they want to do. Uh, even if you just want to be a a, a social media influencer, uh, you use all of this to build up your digital footprint, and so you can be successful out there. Yeah, I wish I wish that was around a couple of years ago when I started. That would have been very helpful <laughs> instead of just kind of. You know, it felt like I was clawing through the dark trying to figure this out. I had no clue. Uh, you know, I was on social media, but I didn't understand social media. I didn't. Uh, I didn't really even know what an algorithm was or <laughs> analytical data and and all that. Just and trying to figure. I mean, building the website was such a pain. I, I actually hired someone. Oh yeah, a friend of mine to to do it, and that was not. I, I don't love the guy. Great dude, but I don't I never recommend anybody do that because it was it wasn't a priority to him. He wasn't passionate about tarantulas and building my brand and, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean? It, for him it was essentially he's doing me a favor and making a little bit of money off of it. So it's like he got yeah. he, he, and he was a computer programmer. So he's using WordPress and and, and coding and building this this website. Mm. Got halfway through it and was like, "Oh, I'm busy with something else on my job." Um, you're gonna you either you got to do it yourself or wait until I have the free time, and it's like I don't know how to do this. So it's like I pretty much had to scrap that entire project and find and like go through Squarespace, you know, someone like that, and kind of build my own website, yeah, yeah. you know. And then it just and the thing is, especially us us in the niche communities, there's some needs that we have that you you're not gonna get when you uh when you're talking to somebody who's talking to a wide audience. Like, I, I mean, I, I go through the, I've gone through people's classes and so I know what's out there, but I know that the training out there is very general and and that's how they make their money because it's to a larger audience and the larger the audience, the more people are going to pay you. Uh, but if you are in a niche community, there's a lot of translation that needs to be done as to how does that work for me? I mean, you talk to these Instagram people, I, I got 50,000 followers in six months. And yeah, that's great when you are teaching how to do Instagram on a the Instagram platform where default uh, 1.4 billion people are there who want to learn Instagram. Yeah, that's great. But how do you grow an account for a niche like mud skippers uh, when you don't even know where the mud skipper people are and they don't even know to look for you? Well... Uh, that's, that's what I'm going over. And, and in fact, an interesting, that's exactly the situation I'm going through with reptile entrepreneur because reptile people aren't necessarily looking for, they don't know that there's an entrepreneurial, um, uh, service or information for them. So they don't know to look for it. Entrepreneurs, well, they're not interested in reptiles. So, uh, I, a, having a reptile entrepreneur, uh, I'm a business that nobody knows exists and doesn't even know to look for it. So I, I know there's a huge need and the people who have found me, uh, uh, the response has been incredible. Uh, but like on Instagram, it's just a challenge to figure out how to get the word out there that this exists. And I mean, what hashtags do you use? Uh, entrepreneurial hashtags. Well, no reptile person is going to end up with those reptile hashtags. They're going, what the heck is this? How to do Instagram? <laughs> Why is this on my feed? <laughs> so uh, it's been an interesting challenge to do that. Yeah. If I that way to stand out is, is very difficult. Um, and, and I think it's interesting. Um, I, I kind of want to get into the, like the Genesis. I mean, you've kind of touched on it, but you know, I, I, I want to do that, but you know, I've noticed, there are a lot of people, and, and I'm I like again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the reptile community, as as compared to what I know about the tarantula community. But I know there's a lot of people, uh, you know, in in this niche, which is you know, just like a subset of the reptile community, that know that they love tarantulas, they're breeding them, and they want to sell them, and and at least 
if not make it mm-hmm. self-sustainable, at, you know, possibly even make a little bit of profit or turn it into a career. Mm-hmm. And there's some that have done it really yeah. well, but have almost no online presence. You know, like they have a website with their inventory, but mm-hmm. it looks like that website was made 20 years ago. You know, it's just very <laughs> bland and boring uh-huh. and frustrating and difficult uh-huh. to, to, you know, there's, there's some people that have like 200 tarantulas that, uh, you know, in stock to sell. Uh, but when you go to their website, you got to scroll and scroll and scroll. Like there's no, um, mm-hmm. kind of like database where it's easily searchable and, and I, 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 there's just, there's a lot of work that could be done to kind of streamline and, and update the process. And it just, it seems like a lot of people, um, either they don't appreciate the, the power that social media has for advertising their businesses and, and getting involved in that. Uh, or they just, it's like, that's, it's too difficult. It's overwhelming. And, and a lot of people are just yeah, like, I, I don't even want to deal with it. It's overwhelming. So I think it's really, uh, it's absolutely, sorry, go ahead. I just, I think it's really cool what you're doing. So when, when, uh, you know, I came across or, you know, got, you were shared with me. I was like, I, this is a much needed service. And I was curious, like, you know, uh, the genesis of it, like how, when did, when did you have that aha moment that like, uh, you know, I have this experience and knowledge and I have this passion and I can, I can put them together and help a whole lot of people. Like how long ago, like how did that even just you know, dawn on you? Honestly, it was about 10 years ago that I said, this is really necessary uh, but I also, at that point, I wanted to have more experience in actually doing that. And that's right about the time where I put my attention towards, uh, I have a, a caging company that I make chameleon cages. And, uh, and so I put all my efforts into that and built that up. Uh, and, and then I built up my chameleon, uh, focused, outreach the chameleon academy a huge website and podcasts and videos and after all of that and uh, applying all of that it occurred to me it's time and so it's really something that i wanted to do for a while and i realized that there was a need for a while but it what it just didn't seem to be the time until last year it hit me this is it it's time to do this and uh and i just started it was really there was about a month period between me saying all right it's time and me launching because it's it's just been growing all this time and uh and so it was just waiting to be let out yeah i mean covid has been a a terrible thing for you know many people (laughs) in in society and the economy Mm -hmm. and stuff like that except for this platform kind of for the online space, yeah. it's, it's, it's been a huge boom. Uh, like, I don't think I would have near the subscribers or followers that I do now if I had started this five years yeah. ago, uh, you know, because people weren't trapped inside and, and doing everything online. And it's like, it's just starting a business right now. Like people, and I think moving forward, no matter what happens, the, this behavior has been developed and people have realized the, the value and, the ease. Uh, and, and so I, I think that moving forward, it's going to be as big as it, as it ever has been. So it's, it's an exciting space to get involved in, uh, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or anything like that. Um, but, and I'm sure you touch about this a lot on, on, on when you're discussing these things, but the biggest hurdle that I've had to deal with, and, and I've heard a lot of other people are frustrated with is how rapidly things change. You know, like, you could learn oh the hashtag, like the best strategy for hashtags on Instagram in 2019, but now here in 2022, it's like that's completely antiquated information, and they they are constantly reformatting or you know kind of doing making changes to the algorithms. So how do you stay up to date yeah. on on all of this information? Okay, you've touched on something that is huge, a, a huge movement that's going on right now. Uh, Instagram is. Uh, a very powerful platform and it is, it is going through an amazing evolution very quickly uh, because Instagram is Facebook. And now the company's called meta. It's their best chance at staying relevant in the world. TikTok has burst onto the scene and it's achieved in a, a, a couple of years, few years, what Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and all of them have taken 15 years to achieve. 
And uh, this year, if it hasn't already, TikTok will break into the top three social media, which is uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. And uh, TikTok is very soon, if it hasn't already, going to pass up Instagram and take up the number three spot. And of course, Meta, the company, has noticed this. And they've noticed that the decrease of people on Facebook, I mean, it's still a huge platform. I mean, it is the number one platform, but they're seeing the trends and they're seeing the age demographics. They're not getting the young people. And so their time is limited and Meta realizes that and Instagram is their best way at staying relevant. And so they have invested an enormous amount of time, into and and resources into uh, building up Instagram. And so uh, over the last year, I mean, we have seen updates, features uh, appearing on Instagram almost on a weekly basis at times. It's just moving so quickly. Now, a lot of these features are copied from TikTok because they're trying to take that TikTok energy. Uh, I'm not necessarily terribly happy about that because I... I, You want to have a vision for your product. You don't want to just be copying other people. And when you take TikTok's got its own culture, and so when you take the uh, the 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 features from the TikTok culture and you put it into the Instagram culture, we're all saying, uh, "Okay, what do we do with this?" We we started with still shots, and now now it's all about short videos, which we call reels. Less than 60 60 second videos. What are we going to do with this? And uh, that's the future because uh, the Instagram, the head of Instagram's come out right out and said, you guys love these short videos, these reels. I mean, that has driven the growth of Instagram. And so those of us on Instagram, if you're on Instagram, uh, I have news for you. Your wonderful still images are going to be less and less the priority. And in, in fact, the head of Instagram, Adam Osseri, said, uh, we're no longer a photo sharing app. Uh, so Instagram is, yeah, so those of us who've built, I mean, that that's me too. I built up my, my Instagram account on uh, still images and I am working hard to evolve with social media and become a video producing guy real 60 second i'm a podcaster i spend 30 minutes getting all everything out what you want me to put into 60 seconds so so i'm you know you talked about how overwhelming it is i i can do this show this reptile entrepreneur show because i'm living it I am having to evolve with it. And so I know exactly what you all are going through, but we have to do it for us to be successful and stay with the times and, and stick with it. We either evolve with it or else we fade away into the background. Just like all the people who didn't, didn't follow social media, they faded away and they don't exist. It's, we, we've lost so much information because the the people who started like a reptile community didn't really get onto social media. And so in the eyes of our community, they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely true. It's like, you know, people were on message boards and stuff like, <laughs> like arachnoboards yeah, is, is still a thing, yeah. but it's like, it's a very small fraction of the people in the community, even though it exists, let alone interact with it you know it's like why would i go to a message board or a forum when you know i I could just have this conversation or watch a video or you know be in a like on facebook or something like it's a loss that allure um and it's frustrating like i i loved instagram because it was a photo sharing app like i Mm like taking photos and editing them and posting them and and we touched on this i think we mentioned it briefly in your podcast but it's like the I, i would make a reel you know, a 30 second video clip. I would almost just like, I would have a 10 minute video on YouTube and I would like almost make a highlight of real of that. And I would post it on, on uh, Instagram. You know, at the same time I posted a photo, the photo would have, you know, like a thousand likes. Whereas the video I posted, maybe even like an hour or two after the photo, 
has like tens of thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of views and likes and, and just hundreds yes. of comments. And yes. it's like, I don't want to do TikTok. Like I, I, I re- I think it was about a year ago. I finally downloaded TikTok cause it was, it, I, I fought mm-hmm. it. I was like, I don't want to do it. That's, you know, it's for young <laughs> kids and it just, I don't want, I'm, yeah. I'm not a dancer. I'm not going to go in there and, and dance around like <laughs> with tarantulas or whatever. So I, I resisted it for a long time and, until it got to the point. It was like undeniable. There's billions of people on there. And, uh, I just kind of yeah. looked, you know, I downloaded it. I was going, I was just kind of searching around there and realized there was very little at the time, there were little to no tarantula creators on there, very few reptile creators. And it was like, well, th- there's an audience obviously, and there's a vacuum. Like, so maybe there's something mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, and, and I, to this day, I have yet to really take it seriously. A lot of people have, though, like, uh, especially in the past six months, there's been a yeah. lot of content creators focused on reptiles and, and tarantulas and stuff like that that are are just blowing up on, on Instagram or on, I mean, I'm sorry, on TikTok. And essentially all I'm doing is just yeah. take, is just like make taking clips from videos I've made for YouTube and posting them on there. But even just doing that minimal effort has generated thousands, tens of thousands of followers and people coming cross platform. Like, well, I enjoy the TikTok. And, you know, they go into my bio and they see the links to the YouTube and the Instagram and the Facebook and, and they, they start moving around through the, all the other content. So it's like, it, it's, it's worth it, but it's just really frustrating to see not only Instagram switching over to reels and, and those, I, I just don't know if people are watching them more or if Instagram's promoting them more, but now YouTube's doing that with the shorts. Both. Uh, you know, I, I, I saw someone on Facebook now has stories or like, not just stories, but like reels, just like, I mean, they're just, you know, putting the, the Instagram stuff over on Facebook. So you know, it's so here's our problem. The the uh, the short videos are addictive and it's very easy to sit there and just scroll through them, scroll through them. And the so our social media platforms, their success is how much time you spend on the platform. And so what they found is, OK, we've got this addictive substance that people turn their brains off and they just, uh, uh, uh. and so they're all going towards that. They're giving more of this addictive substance. And so it's disturbing that all of our major social media platforms are coalescing around this one thing to try to fight for that mindless scrolling. Uh, And so we're, yeah. And, And we're losing what made those social media platforms unique? The still images of Instagram, the forum of, I don't know, of, I don't even want to talk about Facebook. That's just, but uh, uh, YouTube, the long form video, but at least with the YouTube long form video, it's a search engine. And so people are going there to learn things. Now, one thing that is, uh, that will happen is that TikTok is going to have to evolve as well. Yes, they brought in this addictive short video, but they can't go on like that forever. And so uh, I know what we're going to see is that TikTok is going to start to uh, become more substan- uh, sub- substantial in what you can do as far as your profiles are going to start uh, bringing uh, business in because you it's all fun and games, but you really don't have... Uh, solid performers stick with you unless they're making money. And so, you know, they're, they're starting uh, creator funds just like Instagram is. And uh, so they're trying to support their creators like YouTube has. And YouTube has this, uh, this enormously uh, dedicated uh, base of creators because they get paid. And so TikTok, as long with Instagram, they're all going to be starting to try to figure out how to pay their creators. And uh, TikTok will have to start becoming more substantial uh, in more than just short videos. So I think TikTok is a great place to get a foothold in with the idea that in the future, it will become more of a platform that we can work with to communicate uh, real information and not just dancing yeah yeah that was my biggest gripe and why i'm still so resistant to tiktok and and even like instagram reels and stuff is as a videographer as someone that enjoys you know recording videos the vertical aspect 
it just seems to go mm-hmm. against everything that I enjoy seeing and have learned about it. It's like I got to turn my camera like this, and and now all the the like you know, it was all about trying to get the widest shot possible, and now it, now you, you turn that on its end, and you know sometimes it can be really really frustrating for me. But I, I recently noticed that my TikTok account is can now go three minutes, so it's like I can I can upload a three minute video, not okay. restricted to sixty seconds. Uh, but it's like what it's it's difficult to you know sometimes I have a hard time fitting all the information I want to f- talk about into a ten minute video. So cutting that down to a three minute video or ideally a sixty second video. And like when I was doing mm-hmm. some research on TikTok, they're like, yeah, they give you sixty seconds, but the, you're going to get the most views if you keep between fifteen and twenty seconds. And it's like, what can I teach yeah. someone, or you know, what can I do in twenty seconds that is going to be worth a damn? You know, so it's like. Yeah, it, it, that's. I think that's why it's so much you, weird, goofy stuff is going on there because you, you don't have the time well, to really connect. I, I have some good news for you. Uh, Instagram, who really likes to look uh, analyze these things, uh, came out with a report saying that they're seeing that there is a shift towards educational reels. So people teaching things through reels. So we're seeing an what we see in uh, social media in evolution uh <clears throat> excuse me they everybody loved the uh, the singing the dancing and the educational reels or tiktoks or shorts uh but it's going to evolve what people uh, people are going to try do uh, doing different things with that media that that fits their personality and these things are going to start taking off. And so the more people who start to do educational, I call them reels because I work mostly on Instagram, but TikToks, they're, 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 a video is less than 60 seconds. Uh, the more of us who do these educational things, the more people will say, oh, okay, that's available to me. And so they'll look for those kind of things. And so we're at the the beginning of the trend towards exploring what we can do with 60 seconds that isn't dancing or making people laugh. And so uh, the audience is open to that. So those of us, Richard, you, I, me, and uh, those of us in the community, it's up to us to start defining what that looks like. And the audience will, uh, will start to pick up on it. And so we're, we're, we're at the beginning of the educational trend. It sounds like you just issued a challenge. <laughs> like, I did. I did. I did. I, I, it's a call to arms, everybody. We've got to make this happen because I can't do lip syncing. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I mean, there was, there was a few moments I actually like, had my phone set up and was like, I want, maybe if I just try one of these little, you know, yeah. <laughs> dance trends on TikTok, it will help. And it's like, I can't, I can't do that. That's just too humiliating. <laughs> so, for yes. Me. Uh, but yeah and and i think that's that's a that's a i think people that are listening that are posting on instagram and and stuff like that should should definitely do that because it's you can only watch so many feeding clips it's like okay that's it's really kind of lost its allure uh but having some like substantive information on there i think would be really cool and you know i've noticed one of the cool things about the short form videos is that i can record one and post it to tiktok to instagram to youtube shorts so it's 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 like three birds with one stone, um, but there are mm-hmm. there are minute differences. You know, it's like you know, I, certain songs or you know background music or styles for TikTok don't really translate well as well to Instagram and like YouTube Shorts. I've I've, I've actually I've struggled with that one the most because from a lot of the people that I follow. Uh, to try to stay up to date on trends and and what works best with the algorithms and stuff, they were suggesting you know you should this is something new that YouTube's doing. They're going to be promoting it a lot, pushing it out. They want it to work. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you you if you want to grow your channel, that's what you got to do. So I started doing that and got a lot of negative backlash because people were getting they were used to ten twelve minute videos from me. And they started getting notifications mm-hmm. that I uploaded something and they go and look at it. Yes. And it's yes. not a, a normal 10 minute video. It's a vertical 30 second video. And they're like, why are you like, you're annoying me. And it's like, sorry. <laughs> you know? yeah. So you know, someone suggested start up a channel that's just for shorts. So, so I started uploading to like the podcast channel and, and, and doing things like that and linking to my main channel. Uh, and, and 
I, I definitely think that it, there's, there's a way to grow your following using that. My issue personally is, is just, yeah, you know, maybe I'm just an old, you know, an old dog that doesn't want to learn new tricks. It's like I'm resistant to that change. It's like I spent a lot of time and effort learning this, and now you're changing things on me, and I'm resistant to that. So, like, how how do you, as a business, as an entrepreneur, uh, and and talking to other entrepreneurs, how how do you convince people to stay up to date and and to be, you know, especially like if you're if you've got a website and you're selling something, like how do you get people to to really understand the importance of, of staying, staying up to date with trends and, and okay. evolving. Well, here, here's a, here's a situation. Everything is going to change around us. There's no way to stop that. You have built up a business, a social media following based on some, some promise, something that people expect from you. And they will always expect that from you. They are not caring about this evolution that's going on. They are not caring about you being relevant five years from now. They want what they want, and you made a promise to them, whether it's 10-minute videos, whether it's uh, uh, chameleon content, who knows, whatever it is, whatever you've been producing consistently, you have generated an audience that wants that content. And that's just what social media is. You do something consistently and people gather around you that enjoy that content. And that's the beauty of social media because you can bring your personality to something and you will find a certain amount of people that enjoy what you bring to that. that that's the beauty of social media. But when it comes time to evolve, because everything's evolving, uh, like we've been hit by this, the short form video. What do we do about that? And how do we evolve with that and embrace that short form video when, and not lose our audience that we have developed with something else? Like, like the, this is the big problem with the YouTube. We've got this long form culture and all of a sudden YouTube is saying, well, here's the short form and we're really going to push it. And now you're faced with this, okay, so I make this short form video, but number one, are the people who like my long term video, how do I make them enjoy now a short form video? And number two, all of the followers that come to me through the short form video, are they going to like the long form video? Because as it is now, YouTube really doesn't monetize the short form video very well. So if you're making your living with long form video, but you're getting followers through the short form video. Now the creator's left to figure out how do I reconcile the two and make sure that both audiences are happy? How do I make that one audience? So that's not totally clear. And we're, we're still working through that right now. So, uh, Instagram's the same thing. Now I've got these reels. What do I do with the reels? And, and for the audience, short, the, the TikTok burst onto the scene with these short videos. Uh, YouTube decided they wanted to try it out. They call them shorts. Instagram calls them reels. Everybody's got their own name for it. And, and the, the, the length keeps changing, you know, started off with 50 sec, 15 seconds, 30, and now it's 60. And, and now the trend's going to three minutes. So uh, all of this is always changing, but it is, if you have built up a following, your challenge is to figure out how to keep that following, but realize that there is a whole new sex, a whole new generation of people who are, sorry, <laughs> whole new uh, uh, generation of people that are, uh, that like the new form. So long form video, still images, 10,000, 20,000 followers. Well, the people coming in are liking the 60 second videos. And if you have a large following, like on uh, say, let's take Instagram, for example, if you have a large following that love your still images and your carousels, your, your graphics, what you've been doing, you may have enough momentum to continue your business going forward, but you will 
step by step be pushed to the background as the new this new reels the 60 second videos the short form videos start to take over as instagram pushes it more the new people coming to instagram are going to be expecting reels and so the the people who like the still images they they will f gradually fall off by attrition uh, and they are going to be replaced by people who enjoy the short form video so you're going to be seeing a a demographic shift in the people you're trying to reach on the platform that you were excellent at the demographics is going to change under your feet and so the value of recognizing these trends is that you can figure out how to change what you're doing so you can be part of that trend and be part of the new generation it's not going to happen immediately you're not going to lose all of your still your fans who love your still images it's going to be over years that this transition happens and well actually with instagram they're pushing it they're trying to make it like over months but uh now's the time to start figuring out how you can be part of this new world this new world of videos i don't like videos well too bad um that's the future i don't know what to tell you but the good news is this this is still social media and what this means is you look at you look at that 60 seconds you look at what TikTok is doing you look at the people dancing and lip syncing and it's a lot of fun and i mean i'd love to do it and it's very entertaining if that's not your thing don't get discouraged okay this is the point where you need to not look at those things that you can't do and realize since this is social media your personality who you are as an individual is unique and people love unique so look at this challenge and say uh, and at this at the at the point of recording this video uh the we're at 60 seconds you know 60 seconds video length is the standard it'll change but look at that 60 seconds and say what can i do in 60 seconds that is consistent with my personality my brand and my purpose and i talk on the reptile entrepreneur i talk a lot about purpose why are you here on social media it's not to get follows it's not to get likes it is to promote tarantulas it is to talk about husbandry it is to create something what is that purpose so figure out what can you do in those 60 seconds that is consistent with your purpose and do it it may not get a whole lot of attention in the beginning because it's new but keep doing it if it's quality if it is consistent with your purpose and it has a reason for existing people it's going to slowly grow and people are going to start expecting that from you and coming to get that from you and if they're enjoying it more and more people will add on and so it's something that will build over months i i say try something new that is consistent with your purpose and your personality and keep doing it for three months six months don't get discouraged if it doesn't blow up immediately let the people get used to having that around and start liking having that around and before long you will notice people will find you and will start congregating around that content if they share the same purpose that you have and so uh, don't get discouraged by what you see out there figure out how you can be part of it in your own way and, and not to belabor this but I'll, I'll say one of the most popular uh reptile channels uh a leopard gecko the leopard gecko girl she doesn't show her face if you don't want to show your face just do it in your own style she's incredibly successful and excellent channel i love it uh so figure out how you're gonna do it it doesn't have to be like everybody else yeah i like that you kept uh pushing that that concept of of having a purpose because i think that's uh something that was the advice that was given to me when I first wanted to do this. And I started looking into 
You know, it's like if you just are doing this to get followers and likes and, and be popular, like you're probably not going to do very well. <laughs> like it's, it, it, it's, it's, you just kind of get buffeted around by the, the winds of change. The, so like right off the rip, somebody was like, you know, have a five-year plan, have a mission statement and have like a, a, you know, a goal, like, like things that you actually write down and look at. Like, you know, I am going to put all this time, effort and money into this project because I want to do X, you know? And for me, it was, I, I want to educate people about how to take care of tarantulas, uh, help dispel the fear of arachnids and, and invertebrates, mm-hmm. and, and also try and, and reach out beyond just the, the small niche and community and, and get, you know, the, just kind of get tarantulas in front of the eyes of people that maybe have never considered keeping them as pets and even know you could keep them as pets, you know, do exotic, mm-hmm. you know, exotic pets in general. And just that, that has been uh, like a North Star for me. You know, every time I kind of get caught up in a trend or, or like, oh, you know, this one video seems to do well. And, and the, you know, you get a good response off one thing that you create. The mentality mm-hmm. is I'm just going to keep doing that over and over again. Uh, and sometimes you can you get lost. You're, you're not, you, okay, now I'm just doing unboxing videos. I'm, I'm no longer trying to reach out to people yeah. outside of the community. So how do, how, you know, so it, it helps to kind of keep me on track and keep moving forward. Because I think even though in the short term, that one type of video, or that one type of content is doing well, it's not going to be sustain, sustainable. It, it's pretty soon people are going to be like, okay, uh, yeah, how many, how many times can I watch you unbox tarantulas? It's, it's going to get boring. Uh, you know, so it, like having that kind of North star, that guiding purpose uh, in the long term is going to be very beneficial. Um, at least in my opinion. And I know that it's like a theory of technology. I I wish I could remember who said it or exactly what the quote is. But the concept is that the technology that exists when you're born is just it just your reality. It's it's what what it is. It's not Mm -hmm. amazing. It's just you know. And then like between like twenty and forty or something like that, uh, any new technology that comes out is amazing and and very impressive. After forty, anything that comes out is heretical and evil (laughs) and going to destroy (laughs) civilization. And like, I find myself right on that prefaces now. It's like, <laughs> I, it's been amazing for 20 years. And now the new stuff that's coming out, I'm looking at it like, oh, this is going to destroy society. These 60 minute videos. Get off my lawn. <laughs> like, what can you do with 60 seconds? This is ridiculous. Uh, and it's like, but that's no more ridiculous than when YouTube was launched and people were like, this isn't going to do anything. Like, who, who cares about posting videos? And it's like, I mean, it went from like skateboarding videos and cat videos to people making millions of dollars a year, uh, you know, making videos. Yeah. The best. So it's like, I, I had to, to keep that mindset that maybe I don't appreciate TikTok and I don't like the fact that YouTube and it, I mean, Twitter even did it for a little bit. They had their fleets, the little like 16 second videos. They ended up cutting that out. I think I haven't been able to post like that for a while, but I was like, everybody's going to this short form vertical video content and I don't like it. Uh, but I, I just got to kind of, maybe I'm just old. <laughs> I got to get with the times um, and it's, well, it's a yeah, lot of the stuff we're talking. About, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about purpose. How did you decide? I mean, people are out there going, "Okay, that sounds great," uh, and a little foo foo talk about purpose. But uh, how do you decide what purpose is? How, how did you decide on your purpose, your north star? Uh, it was. It, I don't know. <laughs> I think it had a lot to do with other aspects of my life. Like, you know, I've I had a very troubled 20s and 30s i think like i just uh I, I just was off the rails doing crazy stuff trying to like fill a void in a lot of ways like find my place and it got into a lot of troubles like mentally and physically it just it, it just i was having a lot of issues and you know it kind of had this realization somebody kind of beat me over the head with the the idea that you're never going to be unhappy in life without a purpose. And one of the best purposes is to be of service to other people. So I kind of took that mentality. Like this is something I enjoy. I enjoy tarantulas. I enjoy scorpions and and exotic pets. That is somewhere that I found some peace and solace in my life. Um, And, you know, of course I, like how can I turn this into something that's going to help other people to kind of, you know, so that, that's where my purpose kind of came, came in. I was like, well, I'm going to share my experiences and the things that I've learned with other people, because, you know, there's so much information out there. Some of it's good. Some of it's bad. Some of it's really old. Um, some of it's just like something somebody just made up on a theory. 
So it's like, I'll take my practical experience and share it with people. And I'm not always right. And there's plenty of other different ways that things can be done, but this is what's working for me. And people are responding to that. Like, Hey, just hearing somebody say, Hey, that helped me out almost means more to me than YouTube depositing money into my checking account. It's like, if I could just live off yeah. <laughs> those responses from people that like that was helpful. Yeah, I, I would, you know, that would, that would be an amazing life. So it's like, that's where my purpose and motivation came from was wanting to share my passion in a way that is benefiting other people and the hobby in general. And on a grander scale, the animals that I really enjoy, you know, like if it, if there was any way to make tarantulas, uh, keeping tarantulas and exotic, exotic pets like snakes and all that kind of stuff more normalized and, uh, you know, more widely accepted, that's not just going to help the businesses selling them or the creators making content about them, but it's also going to help the ones that are in the wild that are like their, their habitats being destroyed yeah, yeah. or, you know, they're being like illegally captured and smuggled. And it's like, want to get, want to fix all that stuff. But the only, like the only thing I can do is try to raise awareness and educate people and help them out. And, and hopefully that would, you know, have a ripple effect uh, going forward. Yeah. So having a purpose is, what makes you feel good? What, it, what makes you think that you've been successful in what you are doing? Uh, and with me, it's if somebody can say, hey, I, I was able to create a, a, a website. I was able to uh, get my, my product out there. Uh, that makes all the difference in the world to me. Hey, somebody is now successful in the business because of the listening to my podcast. I, I, one of the greatest things, <laughs> emails I got was from a listener who said, Hey, I listened to your uh, episode and I called in and I, I took, I, I called off, I called the day off of work so I could take my daughter to uh, her first day at kindergarten. That, oh, geez, <laughs> excuse me. Um, it is, it means so much to me that something I said um, got someone to appreciate what it means to his little girl uh, to have him there her first day of kindergarten. Um, obviously, it does mean a lot to me. Um, because that is what's going to make us as human beings. And that's what we're going to remember this working every day for somebody else to where they don't care about you. And just doing that with this idea that we've got a retirement waiting for us when we don't, we really don't that 401k you have may or may not uh, really be there for you and this security we've all been talked about uh it's we've been talked about how we need we have the security of the job if you have the nine to five it's not they can fire you at any moment and they don't care two weeks maybe you get that but then you're left on your own so you spending all that overtime uh because you're a good employee and you're loyal to the company and you're missing out on that family um, that family, those are the people that are going to be next to you in that hospital by that hospital bed, uh, that the company's not going to be there. They're going to figure out how to get you off of the health insurance as quickly as possible because they have a business to run. So you are there trading your time for money. That's not loyalty. That's not family. Maybe there was a sense of family Back when our fathers, our grandfathers were part of companies, I don't know. But I know nowadays it certainly isn't there. And they'll get rid of you. They have no loyalty to you. That family of yours, the, I, I know we've got this, this feeling that we go to work because we love our families. And, and especially anybody going to work, okay, I'm doing this for my family. But we do that so much and we spend so much time that we lose our family. They're just pictures on the desk. And um, one thing that 
I don't know why this is getting me so, so worked up here. Um, one thing that drives me to make this reptile entrepreneur podcast and show and the thing, the purpose, the thing that would make me the happiest is if there are people out there who listen to this and they get out of that rat race, they get out of trading their, their life for money to survive, just to go back to work. And they're able to create a job that number one, they love that fills them with purpose and allows them to spend time with their family. And yeah, it's so true. Yeah. I traded a 40 hour work week so I could work 80 hours at home. And that's absolutely true. Do not get your own business. So you think that you're going to be sitting on a beach that four hour work week. Oh, that, yeah, that's, there's a lot of asterisks and fine print when you do a four hour work week. Um, no, those of us who have done this, uh, it, it's 80 hours. It's seven days a week, but it is, you choose what time you choose at any point I can go and I can go, uh, pick up my daughter from the airport. I can say, okay, it's time to watch the clone wars with my daughter. And I sit and I spend, uh, an hour watching, uh, watching a show and then go back to my 14 hour work day. I can choose which hours I work so I can prioritize, uh, uh, what's important in my life because all of this stuff that we're building, we're building it for a reason. We've got to get to an ending somewhere. And when I'm there and I'm celebrating my success, I want my family to still be there. I want my wife to look back at all this time and say, wow, it was rough, but we did it together. And I want it to be her victory as well. Not, oh my goodness, this hell that I went through. And I don't even know this person I'm standing next to. It's my purpose here is to help anyone else in the reptile community who wants to create a career that they love and still retain that family of theirs and the things that are important to them. And no, this is not a get rich quick thing at all. You will probably not be rich at all. And, uh, and, and I would, uh, all I, my purpose here, I just wanted to get you to the point where you can pay your bills. Okay. You can have a, a job in the reptile community and, and that's translate, you know, inverts and, uh, community. And you can love what you do. The, the, the community, the reptile community is growing so much right now. Right now, if you started a business, you would be able to make some money. I mean, there's still, you still got to, uh, have a quality product. You still have to put in the customer service. You still have to deal with people who think that you're not human and they can treat you however they want to. It's not all daisies and picnics. Uh, and some, and it, sometimes it doesn't work. There's a lot of competition out there and, uh, I'd say a lot of people in the reptile community aren't nice people. And so, you know, I ca keep talking about community, but you know, there's a lot of, we're still human beings and human beings aren't necessarily the nicest things, but, um, uh, you're there's, there's opportunity now there's opportunity. And if I can help you, uh, fill in the pieces that you don't have so you can realize that opportunity, uh, that that would be my purpose. Yeah, if COVID's taught us anything, it's just how um, I, I don't know I, things that I looked at as like I, like I always have a job forty hours a week with insurance mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and to just see hundreds of thousands of people overnight lose their jobs because businesses were shut down. You know, like I had a lot of friends that were waiting tables. They were making great money waiting mm -hmm. tables. Mm -hmm. and never for a moment thought they would be out of work for six months. You know, it's like. And what do they do when, when that happens? It, it, you know, you don't want to, I, I don't know. It, it, that I think is, has really kicked a lot of people in the pants to be like, you know, I, I got to become a master of my own destiny in, in that sense. Uh, you know, I can't rely on these corporations or these businesses or even the government that could just at any moment be like, that's not going to, you can't do that anymore. 
um, you know, it's like we're not going to have another pandemic every five years, but it's it's still it instilled that in that insecurity into my thoughts. Like, mm-hmm. I, I can't rely on this reliable job that I've been grown like grew up thinking like this is what you have to do. It's like well that that didn't work, <laughs> and uh, so what can I do? And I think what you said was was very important. Um, like, yeah, I work more now than I ever did before, but having that ability. Mm-hmm. To be like, okay, well, this is going on at two o'clock in the afternoon on a Wednesday, and it's going to mean a whole lot to my wife or a whole lot to my kid. So I, I had that ability to be like, okay, I'm not working during then. I'm going to go take, go do this. What I struggle with, I think a lot of people do as well, is that you get in this mindset that I'm solely responsible for creating, the, like keeping this business afloat and creating the income. Mm-hmm. So I have to put 110% in all the time. And I, I get faced with these situations like, Working my my forty hour a week job. Sometimes I was here till seven eight o'clock at night. Kid has a recital at six. It just was understood I couldn't go because I have to work and I can't get off work. So I just got to miss that. But now it's like it, that's no longer the understanding. I can leave because I am my own boss. But now I fight with myself and my own kind of thoughts. Yeah, like yeah. I, I can do it, but should I do it? Like is it worth you know like not not and and, and I I feel like almost now I struggle more because I can't blame it on somebody else. I can't be like well. They, you know, my boss won't give me the time off work. I can't make this family event. Now it, it's, it's like, I'm choosing not to do it. <laughs> and like, that's, that, that could be very dangerous. I have to keep what you said in the forefront of my mind a lot of the time. Like this job, it do, does take a whole lot more work, but, I, and, but I have to really kind of grasp to the freedom that it gives me and not get caught up in, you know, just hustle, hustle, hustle. You know, I gotta, I gotta use that, that gift that being self-employed kind of gives you. Yeah, you. it's a different dynamic because when you're working with somebody else, somebody else is forcing you to do something and you do have that internal, okay, how can I give them what they need but still take care of myself? Uh, when you're self-employed, you're doing your own thing, it's like that you don't take care of yourself anymore. Now it is, I've got to make this work. There's a sense of urgency because if you don't make that work, well, then you don't pay the mortgage. And, and so all of that goes, goes away and you're just work, 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 work. And it, this is not a person who is a quotes workaholic. Uh, this is a person who is running scared and they want to keep the house. And so, but what you say is, yes, it is a gift to be able to be self-employed because then you can choose what you're doing for yourself. And here's where, if you do go become self-employed, you need to realize that you are the most valuable part of the entire business and you need to be taken care of. And, and, and this doesn't mean spa days every week. What this means is you've got to know, know how much can you handle and at what point do you need, you're getting diminishing returns because me working all night, which I would work all night, but I realize after about nine o'clock, I am not effective and yeah, okay. I'm going through the motions, but I'm making mistakes and, and, um, I'm hitting send before I really read everything that I'm writing. And, uh, there's a point where you have to say, okay, I've got to take care of the, the, the the core of the business, which is me. Not only do I have to be physically healthy, I need to be physically taken care of as in sleep, good diet, and emotionally. I need to take care of that family that's taking care of me. And so you got to realize all of those things are just as important as you churning out work. And so that, that's one of the most important important things to realize when you take this jump is that now you've really got to take care of yourself because if you go down, everything goes down. And so, uh, treat yourself with the respect and care that you would. You're the most valuable thing in your business. That's an amazing point. And uh, I wish I had realized that sooner because I, I learned that the hard way. I, uh, I was working, 45, technically 45 hours a week at my day job. And then 40 hours a week, you know, I was staying up till three, four o'clock in the morning sometimes, uh, you know, like taking photos, editing videos, you know, and then getting up at eight o'clock in the morning. So I'm getting like four or five hours of sleep a night, day after day, week after week. 
you know, and I was running myself ragged, but it was a, it was a slow incremental degradation of my health that I didn't really notice until, you know, you, you kind of cross that threshold, the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. And it's like, okay, now I have some serious health issues. Why did this happen? And the, the doctor's like, you need to eat better and you need to get more rest and, and reduce your stress. And I'm like, oh, geez. And that's, that's kind of why COVID for me was a godsend because it, it gave me that ability, that push to be like, okay, you're going to do this full time. You're going to, you're going to step away from your nine to five and you're going to focus on doing this. And, and that's that, that balance, like creating some uh, realistic expectations and healthy boundaries is really difficult for people, whether it's in relationships or with work or, you know, whatever it is. That's something I struggled with a lot my entire life, and it's something I have to focus yeah. on a lot with this because it'd be very easy for me to, you know, take the kid to daycare, drop him off, kid goes to school, and then work until midnight every day. And sometimes that happens. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I mm-hmm. need to do that, but it's also important. Like my wife, like we we like going hiking, you know, taking a weekend or a week and, and going somewhere out in the mountains where there's no Wi-Fi, <laughs> there's no internet, and <laughs> and hiking yeah. and enjoying and. When we when when I was doing this full time, first started doing that, I felt really guilty. Like, I'm 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 leaving money on the table. Is is like was my mindset. Like I could be spending like we're we're just walking around in the woods or hanging out in a hammock. You know, like I could be spending this time creating content that's going to generate revenue. It's going to pay our mortgage. Uh, and so I felt selfish until you know it's kind of that shift of of mindset or perception. It's like no, this is more important. <laughs> you know, like having my health and and time with my family like that's what's important yeah yeah and 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 it's not because you're just some high fluting idea of okay i'm a family man it's that your family sustains you you sustain the family It, it is a critical component to who we are as a human being and it makes you somebody that can make that business because we don't buy, I mean, okay, you're, we're, we go online and we buy things, but especially in the reptile community, uh, we are a close-knit community. You talk with the people that you do business with, and this you need to make sure you're a human being. And, uh, and you know these people. You talk to them, and okay, it's all business, and okay, we'll do a transaction. And then there's the people that you connect with, and you say, okay, I feel good about working with this person. That's a human being and you need to make sure you're a human being and being connected with our family is what makes us a human being. Yeah, very true. And it, for me, like my, my experience, I actually, I didn't even see what was going on with my health. It was my, it was like until people started leaving comments on YouTube videos, like, are you okay? You don't look well, oh, no. you know? And then I start like, I, it brought that awareness into my mind. So I like start mm-hmm. comparing like, Hey, what, what did I look like in a video a year ago? Like, geez, like my, my eyes are sunken in and there's like bags and uh, yellowing and, and like, what is that? I'm aging ridiculously. And that's like, the, I had that same experience. <laughs> yes. I go to the doctor. He's like, let's run some blood tests. And he's like, Oh wow, you've got, you've got some serious issues here. <laughs> let's, let's start working oh, on no. this. And one of his big things was getting eight hours of sleep every night. Like as, as simple as that sounds, I, I, I saw that as, as a luxury and not a necessity. And just by doing that, making sure that I get a full night's sleep has made me more, it make it makes the job easier to do. Uh, I'm more effective, but I'm also a lot better, uh, participant in the family. Cause I'm not always tired mm. and grumpy and in pain and, you know, and I'm, I'm still, I did so much damage, not just from overworking, but you know, just all the hedonism in my, in my early twenties, like, you know, I, I, I it, it, everything's kind of catching up to me and it's more important now than ever to be able to, to find that balance and, and, and be healthy, but also productive, uh, because you can run yourself ragged and it, like you were talking about the, 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 the diminishing returns, like it really, it, it's just like, like buying camera equipment. I realized there's, there's that, that return on investment that just continually diminishes. Like you could spend a thousand dollars on a good camera, $2,000 will get you an amazing camera. But then when you start going to like five, $6,000, like you're spending twice as much, but you're only getting like 5% better. So is it really worth it? Yeah. You know? So it's like, it, it, I could work 15 hours a week. But that extra six hours I'm working, is that really quality? You know, like I, I noticed editing videos until four o'clock in the morning was video. Like I was falling asleep, not paying attention, didn't care. 
wasn't, you know, it's like, it's not producing good quality content. So why am I even torturing myself and my family doing this? And what I think is the coolest I, aspect. I can't, yeah, I can't do that anymore. I can't uh, edit after uh, eight o'clock because I, I, I literally fall asleep and I miss things and I edit out things that I shouldn't edit out. And so uh, I always end up having to do those podcasts over. So, yep, yeah, no yeah. I don't know when I put on these headphones, it's like it lulls me to sleep and then I listen to my voice and, uh, <laughs> and, and I don't realize I fall asleep while I'm editing. Yeah. It, it's not a good thing. I feel you. And, and the cool, like what I think is, is cool about what you're doing um, and educating people is that it doesn't just apply to people like me, like that are content creators or, or people that are like social influencers or, you know, whatever it, it, it's just as applicable to people that are breeding snakes or tarantulas and trying to sell them oh yes 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 artists like there are so many people out there that are wonderful artists and can draw chameleons and snakes and tarantulas and scorpions like no one else and like i I launched a new merch store and was looking really hard to find someone that could create some cool tarantula like drawings or logos like computer graphic kind of stuff that i I just Mm -hmm. i don't have those skills or creativity so i'm reaching out to people that are graphic design artists, okay, like that I know that aren't in the community, I'm like, this is, I need this tarantula. You're you're an artist. Draw this cool spider. Uh, so in in a, in a simple fashion that would go well on a shirt, and they just they don't have the an 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 that an that what's that word anatomical knowledge anatomical yeah. yeah. So it's like they they dry they draw like a cartoon version of it that you know has six legs instead of eight or you know whatever it's like that's not going to pass for my my viewers like the people yeah, that are, yeah. they're they're not going to want to wear a, a picture of a spider on their shirt that's not anatomically correct like so it's got to be correct and it, it it's so hard especially when you're talking about placement of eyes or how the fangs are curved and it's like to just a normal person out there that doesn't matter like it looks like a spider it's a spider but it's like well to people mm-hmm. that are really into the hobby they they want it to at least have the, that appearance of being an actual tarantula or uh, you know that specific species of snake so you can only get that level of um accuracy from someone that has a lot of knowledge and understanding and and passion or appreciation for those those animals so finding those artists out there that can draw a tarantula like photorealistic like it's just that almost looks like somebody took a picture your hand you're drawing a pencil is so amazing you know so finding those people like they're they're there's a need for that, but they don't have the ability or the knowledge or the understanding of social media to promote themselves. And it's like, you are extremely talented. There are a lot of people that want to pay for that, but how do you like, they just don't know how to break through all the noise of social media. Um, And I think there's a lot of people out there that can make careers out of like my friend Mo started, he realized and it for a long time that there was, there was a need for, enclosures made specifically for tarantulas because i mean there's there's ones for chameleons there's mm-hmm. ones made for snakes and leopard geckos and in the tarantula community or scorpions you pretty much had to buy an enclosure that was made for a reptile and then bring it home and retrofit it to work ideally for a tarantula or it was like it's good enough it's close enough it's not ideal there they could be some things that are better but this will be okay so we'll we'll use it for this but there was nobody out there that was like designing and producing an enclosure made specifically for tarantulas. And he saw that, that need. And cause you know, like, like tarantulas like cross ventilation and most reptile enclosures have like a, a top ventilation. So it's like, you know, to find, he, he finally was just like, I, I can't find what I'm looking for. So I'm going to make it myself. And he made one himself kind of like a prototype. And everybody's like, well, where did you get that? I want to get one of those. So it's like, he, he has his own, you know, like 50 hour a week job but realized that there was a need for this. And now he's got a thriving online business selling tarantula enclosures, oh, awesome. which you never would have thought like who would have, like if you went to a, a bank mm-hmm. and were like, I need, I want to create enclosures for tarantulas. Can I get a loan? They would have been, they would have laughed you out. <laughs> like, no, there's no way there's no demand for that. When in reality, if, if you know how to navigate social media and yeah. get yeah. your, your brand to the, in front of the right eyes, you could become extremely successful. So I, so what you're doing is not just for content creators or people that want to oh, like no, no. grow on Instagram. I mean, this is, would be even more applicable to people that are selling, like are breeding and selling, uh, you know, different yes, species. Yes. yes. It, it's a template. 
it's a template actually can be used for anybody. And me saying this is for the reptile community is just me focusing my efforts. This this can be used by any community. You have a Instagram, you have your social media base, you have your uh, you have your uh, e-commerce setup that can sell anything. You have your podcast, YouTube, or whatever kind of video outreach, and you have your website. I mean, with those those pieces, you can use it with anything. It's just a template. You fill it with what uh, what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that's something that. Uh, like we talked about, some people are just hesitant to change or resistant to change. And I've talked to a lot of, um, you know, just from my experience, like tarantula dealers. And there are some of them out there that really embrace the social media influencer or social media advertising. And then there are others that, I mean, I'm not going to say they're older, but, you know, like maybe they've been around a lot more where that wasn't, there was no return on investment in that, you know, like. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, paying somebody that has a huge Instagram following or makes YouTube videos to promote your business was like, kind of just like throwing money down the drain. And like, I remember from my time, uh, cause we, you know, we did a lot of some, some SEO research cause we had a small business that I was working with before I went full-time YouTube trying like the marketing was the hardest part. And we had somebody that said like, yeah, half the money you spend on marketing is not going to be effective at all. And the other half will be will be effective but you'll never know which half is which and it's like right you know right. that that kind of blinds so some people i think are just like well I, if i don't know if this is actually having a good return on investment i'm just not going to spend the money and for anybody that's in the community has seen over the past like two years in particular there were these huge dominant businesses that were like the main supplier like most that's where people went and bought their tarantulas or that's where they went and bought their enclosures or their substrates or whatever it was but they didn't embrace social media advertising or they just like bought Google ads that popped up annoyingly. They, they, they weren't yeah, yeah. integrated into content, but then these smaller businesses that were just starting up did do that, that are now have dwarfed, you know, they, they, they've outgrown these institutional businesses. We'll say if that's possible. So, I mean, they're, yeah. it is important if you want to have a business, I think that you really kind of embrace the social yeah, media yeah. advertising aspect. Yeah, and I say Instagram is a an excellent choice because they've got a structure for you can uh, have a profile, and I, although it's going to video, you still can do uh, you can still do uh, still still images. You can do graphics, and so there's a a, a wide a variety of ways that you can present yourself, whichever is best for you. And it's got the direct messaging. And so you've got that personal one-on-one -on -one capability. So it is the combination, the, the good combination of all the features you need and they're, they're investing in it. It's growing. And so, uh, this is, if you're wondering about a social media outreach, I mean, Instagram is the great place to go. And then of course I'm going over it how to do it if uh, if you're wondering so what is if if somebody out there has a business or they want to start a business or they just you know they they really just want more people kind of following them so they can maybe in the future grow a business uh, where how where is, what's the easiest way to follow you like where where is all this information like where can you just kind of give us uh your addresses to oh, everywhere oh, to, <laughs> oh yes yes i could do that <laughs> uh so to the, the reptile entrepreneur, you can find me at reptileentrepreneur.com. And yes, I know you, you, everybody, a lot of people have to uh, look up entrepreneur. I know I did and how to dispel it. It's, 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 it's all ease and then a U at the end. So vowel wise, but, uh, uh, there is a thriving Instagram, uh, account, uh, reptile entrepreneur, uh, all one word. And uh, there's the podcast, the Reptile Entrepreneur Podcast, which you can find on any podcast uh, uh, provider. And there's a YouTube channel where I am slowly building that up. And I have great uh, designs for uh, more tutorials on that channel. So uh, this is a relatively new outreach and a number of these things are being built up. But uh, uh uh, you can find me at any one of those platforms. Uh, I'd say website and the uh, uh, start congregating around the Instagram channel because uh, account because that's where uh, things are. Uh, I'm making my home base. I gotcha. 
And do you do any private consultation? Like if, if I had a business and, and I was really want some one-on-one help, uh, do you do anything like that? Or is it all just, you know, social media based? Yes, I would do something like that. Uh, just reach out to me, bill at reptileentrepreneur.com if you'd like some private consultation and we can discuss uh, what your needs are and how to take care of that. I think that that would be a great service for some, because I've had some businesses uh, that I have been in contact with, you know, they're small mom and pops uh, and they've been interested in like advertising on a video or something, but they don't really understand not just what benefits would be there, but how to capitalize on it. Like I want to run an ad in a video that maybe 20,000 people will see. And it's going to direct a lot of traffic to my, my website. But like, like one business that did that, they were like, it got it. They were overwhelmed. <laughs> like it, this turned into a mm-hmm. bad experience because I got so many orders that I wasn't able to keep up with them. And some of them got sent out late. No. And some of them got messed up. So, you know, having, you know, someone that can, can really kind of help guide you through that, give you a strategy and, and stuff like that. I think it'd be really beneficial for some of these businesses. Yeah. It's when you're coming up with a strategy, it's really important to figure out what, what is good for your personal situation because uh, it's very easy just to give general advice. And that's what I do on the podcast and, and such. It, it's for the wide audience, but for your personal situation, uh, what your personal goals are and uh, what your capabilities are, uh, those all need to come together. If you're going to have a, an effective strategy that works for you. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah. That's very cool. And I really appreciate you being willing to come on and for having me on your podcast. That was a lot of fun. I think, this is the first time we've really had a conversation like this business related. Yeah. Like I've yeah. talked to people that breed tarantulas or have businesses and we talk about their business and how it started and stuff like that, but never really got into the business aspect of it. And I think that a lot of people are going to not only find it interesting, but maybe even inspiring, you know, like I could do that. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Oh my God. I, I'm, how many of you out there are at a job you hate and when you go there it's like sucking your life away from you and and i'm not being dramatic i lived that and it was and i could feel my life draining from me and every time i went into work i knew i lost an hour of life on the other end and, and it's like a toxic situation there it, it may not happen immediately but but there is a chance for you to have something of your own and you in the reptile community. If you're listening to this, watching this, listening to this, uh, you're in a community where you have something special that you can use to build something of your own. So uh, please, if you can do it. Yeah. I mean, this is like the perfect time as well. Not because there's a huge explosion of online uh, businesses and stuff like that, but, the reptile community, the exotic pet community seems to be going through more of a growth spurt now than it has in the past 30 years. You know, like, it's I mean, been, I, I will tell you, I have business in the reptile community and it's just been the number of orders. It's just overwhelming the manufacturing capability right now is a very good time to start a business in this community. We've just grown so quickly that there's a need for good breeders and good products and specialty products. If you've got a 3d printer and you do stuff for your specialty niche, uh, there is a need for it and people are willing to spend the money to get quality. So if you produce quality, there's an opportunity for you right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like uh, buying Bitcoin back in 2010. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. it's a good time to get in on the ground floor. Uh, you know, it, uh-huh. it's something you want to do that space is, is aching for it and it's rapidly expanding, which I think is, is really cool. And it's not just yeah. in the United States. I think that's something because we've got a lot of international, like I'm in the U S you're in the U S um, or in North America, but there, I mean, it's also growing huge and not just like, can uh, not Canada, but like the UK, and throughout Europe, but I mean, I've got people sending me messages and stuff from Russia and Japan and the Philippines and like countries that I, it's not that I forget about them, but it's like, I, I, I just digitally on the other side of the world. So I assume they're not watching mm-hmm. me because you know, they, they speak a different language or something, but that's not the case. And, and they're, they have a demand for this stuff. So even if you're, you know, in another country, yes. you, you do have the opportunity to kind of get into this field and, and create your own business. Oh, I have so many people say, oh, can you ship internationally? And Yes, I can, except the rates are so astronomical. So if you are, no matter where you are, 
you can start a business. And yeah, it, it may take a little while for everybody to figure out that you're there. But once they do, uh, there's a huge opportunity if you're on the ground floor and you have the patience to build something from the ground floor. It's a very powerful place to be. Uh, you know, it, it's lonely at first and you got to have patience and tenacity, but it's a very good place to be. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing your experience and passion. Oh, I and, loved it. Yeah, it'll be a lot of fun. I, I'm sure people will, will have enjoyed doing this, and hopefully, somebody will start a new business from listening to these podcasts. And so, if you, if you want to, please do and let me know. Yeah, because <laughs> that is my purpose, and that is what makes it worth it for me. I, I love having my followers, but those are just numbers. I love it when somebody says it actually meant something to me, and I did something please let me know right on now if you're watching this on youtube i will leave links to his instagram website all that kind of stuff down below in the description if you're listening to the podcast uh, i'll put that in the show notes as well but uh, just in case you don't access that can you just tell us one more time what is your instagram reptile entrepreneur is there a, a, an underscore or is it just one word reptile there are no underscores i took i took out the underscore so nice. i could just say reptile entrepreneur one word and I didn't have to say underscore dash. That I got it. So it's one word reptile entrepreneur. All right. Well, thank you so much yeah, for coming on everybody. Then, go check him out. And he's got one more thing to say. What's that? Oh, I was just reptile entrepreneur.com is the website. But, oh, okay. Yeah. Right on. Well, thank you so much. Uh, and and if, if you haven't already, if you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to head over to his podcast and listen to him interviewing me. So you get both sides of the coin there. Yeah. So it, uh, yeah, it, it, you got a two for one today. Well, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for listening. Be sure you're following, liking, and subscribing, and all that stuff. Check out his, his social media and website, and we will see you next Thursday. Goodbye. See you on the interwebs. 